Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 221, but you can also use this with 2019, etc. And I'm going to be showing the pointillized filter. So destructive as well as a non-destructive effect, depending if you use it as smart objects or using it just as a normal image. So first thing to do, I always duplicate the background. So I'm just going to go to a layer, because the thing is you can always remove it. If you created a layer, if you added all the effects to just that layer, you can't go back, not very easy without undoing everything. So what you can do, just go down there to layer and duplicate, and now apply the effect there. So filter, and then go down to pixelate and pointillize. Now, of course, you can bind this with a number of other effects as well. I'm not going to run through all the possible combinations. You could use it with oil paint, with blurs, etc. I'm just going to go through the actual. Now, you'll notice it's got a white background there. It shows the image, obviously. You can see the image, all these obviously reds and things. And that's from here. So if I had that as black, then it would have black there. Obviously, it's got white, so you can see white. And you can increase the size, you can make it very big, and then you can make very thin grain designs. Great for, so you can always click there and play it. You can see a nice grain design there. But what I want to do is I'm going to go to filter and pixelate and pointillize again. And I'm going to have cell size about there. Now you can always apply it again, perfectly reasonable, just simply go to filter and pointillize again, and you can see, do it three or four times, perfectly reasonable. And as you do that, you'll notice that it gets changes. You've got lots of bits of white coming in there as well. So it does vary over time. So you can really, by, of course, if you've got black, it will get darker, but obviously if you've got white, you're gonna get all these sort of like pastel colors kicking in. So you can, can vary it. I'm just going to undo those, I don't want all that. So I've got that design there. What you can do, I can select the white. So you can go there, just go to select, and you can go, you obviously use a number of section ones, but I'm going to go for color range. And what I can do is I can select that. Change the fuzziness if you want. Just keep it down there, click OK. And then you've applied that. Now, of course, what's happened, it's selected the areas that I, but some areas, of course, it's selected. Actually, I don't want to I've noticed it's selected quite a few lighter ones. That's the trouble with having some light areas in there. It's selected a few of those ones. Anyway, that's by the by. What you can do, you can always go to select an inverse. And now what you can do, you can remove that. Well, you can remove it by simply copying and pasting, because I'm, I'm going to use another layer. So Control C, Control V. Obviously, you could do edit and copy and paste. So now I've got that all that on the layer, and I can remove that if I want. So you can see now, you can see through, you've got transparency there. So it cuts through, but you've got the general, sort of most of those sort of pointillized effects just on a layer now. What you can then do is go to layer and layer style. Such a pity the filters do not have this sort of feature inbuilt. I would love to see that just as a quick feature, just create the effect, but create it, but with a, like on a new layer or on a, with a transparency, etc. The thing is, quite a few of the newer filters, like a neural filter, they use that effect, that sort of option. But unfortunately, some of the older ones still have not been updated. I would love to see that. However, get off that. So layer style, bevel and boss. And then what you can see, you can obviously you can set the settings a bit better than that. Size, you can reduce it down. And then you can see instead of having, now it's a bit harder when you go very fine pointed eyes. It's very tricky to actually select the white. So that's why I put a bit, made it slightly bigger so I can actually select the white. And of course, once you've done that, you can vary the angle there. You can change, tweak things there, smooth, chisel, and so on and so on. So if you want to, click OK. So you can see the design there. Now, of course, if you want to, you can always bring back the old ones or maybe fill the background layer with like a gradient or something else like that. Maybe not because it's a very light background there, completely useless as a background. Right. Ah, oh, because of that one there. Okay, so you can actually see through that now. <laughs> it does help not to have a layer blocking. So you can see you can create some very interesting like three-dimensional depth ones, very simple by using this approach. And of course you can always duplicate the design, hold down the alter option key. And you can see you've got there and you can always resize and you can rotate so you don't have to have it the same exactly the same change that a bit 
and you of course you combine it. You can use blending modes as well, darken, and so on and so on. There's a variety of different things you can do with that. So now let's go back. Let's go back all the way through to the original. Now I'm just going to remove those. Don't want those now. That's it. Delete that. Yep. So with that, what you can do, of course, again, layer and duplicate layer. You can then, of course, turn that into a smart object. I think smart objects are much better in terms of you can apply filters effects and you can remove and change the settings and all those sorts of things. So what you can do, just go to a layer and smart object and convert to smart object. So you've got that converted to a smart object. Now, simply go over here to filter, again, pixelate and pointillize, and you can apply that effect. And you can, of course, vary it, make it thin, very small, or maybe go for thick, chunky ones like that. And of course, again, you can always apply it again. So if you change your mind, and actually I'll point out, I will go to black. So set that to black. Now, if I go there to pointillize, you can see now it's applied with black. So, and also what thing is, you can change it. So you can always double click on there and you can always change it. You think, oh, you know what, I want slightly smaller. And you can do that. And not only that, you can also, of course, add adjustments to it. So image, adjustments, and say you don't like that color scheme. Maybe you can go to hue and saturation and maybe go for sort of a different color scheme like that, much brighter, sort of very luminous screen. And of course you can apply other filters, filter and blur and Gaussian blur. So you can blur it slightly. And of course, once you've done that, of course, you can always apply the pointillize again onto that blurry one. So filter and of course pixelate and pointillize. And you can see then you've got the design there. And you can add this with weird sort of streaks coming through there. And of course you can now apply other filters as well. However, if you don't want that, I'm just gonna undo that, back to that one. What you can also do, layer again, duplicate layer. You can always use selections. You don't have to apply the effect to everything. So simply apply it sort of just to that area and then just go to filter obviously and Pixelate, pointillize, set that apply, and you can apply it just to that. And then maybe if you want, you can always move the selection and maybe go to filters and pixelate, pointillize, and apply a different one. So you can set it slightly reduced there, and so on and so on. So you don't need to apply the same effect, you don't need to apply it to the entire design. Super useful for that. Now, what you can also do, you can use it for, let's just undo that. So say you've got that image, and I'm just going to go here to light image and uh, so I want layer and go down here, new adjustment layer, that's what I want, and hue and saturation. So I'm just going to quickly apply that. And what you can do, you can obviously change the color there. You can vary it, maybe not make it so saturated, and you can reduce that down. Now, if you go to layers, what you can see, you've got this mask. And what you can do, you can always add to the mask. So you can always go to click on that, make certain you click on it. Then you can go to edit and fill. I'm just going to go and fill it with a maybe black. And now it's filled with black. And what you can do, you can apply, of course, the pointillize to it. Filter and go down to pixelate, obviously pointillize. And you can see then you can apply that. And instead of obviously the adjustment layer gets the pointillize effect. So there's no pointillize effect applied to it, but you can see. And also what you can do, you can of course apply it again. So you can always go down to pixelate, pointillize, and maybe make it a bit bigger. And you can see the effect coming through there. So it creates some interesting possible variations of full adjustments. And of course, whatever you can apply that if you wanted to as a smart object onto one of the layers. This is applied above the entire design. So, uh, so if I selected that, converted it to a layer, and smart object converts smart object. I could have applied that adjustment just solely to that layer. And of course, one thing also with this, I'm just going to go back there to this. What you can do, you can always resize that adjustment. So it's not only it's not fixed. So you can always move that around, and you can apply, of course, other effects. So if you want to, you can also maybe go to layer, layer style, bevel emboss. Oops. That will apply it to that. Go to layer, layer style, and bevel emboss. And you can see you can then create some interesting sort of pointillized effects 
using a mask. So you can create some really nice textures. And of course, what you can do, you can always hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate that design. And you can see, you can create some very abstract sort of backgrounds there. On top of that, very simple, just using the adjustment layers as well as again, the pointer layers. And you can see words effects there. What you can also do, of course, you can flatten that. Now, you can also use it with maybe patterns as well. So if you want to, you can always use the good old view and pattern preview. OK, and you can see your design there. Let's just go in and uh, just see, see it a bit better. Obviously, I'm just using this design. But what you can then do, of course, is you can go to filter and pixelate and pointillize. And it won't work, which is really weird. Some do, some oh, but it does work. <laughs> OK, I thought it did. However, of course, you, the problem is it's not there's not seamless tiles. But however, you've got really quite a nice design there, I think, in the pattern preview. And of course, you can combine it. You can smudge the edges and all those sort of things if you want to do that as well. So that's run through a number of features of the point dice. Of course, with Photoshop, there are many, many others. I'm certain that people would turn around and say, you should have done this or you should have done that. It's always the way. Hope you found this of interest. Always have new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, and many, many others. Also, some questions, any sort of comments, please put those in the comments section. Always great. Also, a dislike or a like. Always appreciated. Thank you much.